our next project right here. Uh, we're going to do, this is a rustic cherry frame with mitered corners, and then I cut rabbits in the back with the data stack on the table saw. This is a six by six piece of mirror, and I just laser engraved on the back of it. So there's a photo of my uh, daughter and my dog down at the Bear River. A couple of nice things about the photo that I'm looking for is a lot of contrast. Um, it was a color photo off my phone, um, and you might want to play with a few different photos. And then also, I, I like it a lot too, because as you kind of hold it up to the light, you get a lot of different depth on the picture. Okay. So let me kind of run through this project today. Um, the other thing I like about it too is I, I took a photo, I uploaded it in Corel Draw, I've made it black and white, and then I inversed it, meaning that all of the blacks became whites, all of the whites became blacks. So an inverse is really an opposite function, no different than the inverse function of addition is subtraction, the inverse function of multiplication is division, the inverse function of a, a trig function sine is the inverse sign. And that's really all you're doing here, is you're taking these pixels and you're reversing them to their opposite. Okay, here's the photo that I'm gonna convert into my mirror glass. So I have this photo saved on my desktop. I open up Corel Draw, I'm gonna create a new document. I'm gonna set the parameters of the document to the size of my glass, six by six, and I always wanna stay in RGB. Up here, I'm gonna hit File, import and I'm going to go back to that desktop photo and import it. I'm going to zoom way out. It's a really large photo. I'm going to bring it way down to size. That's the size of my glass. And then from there I'm going to crop it to fit that glass. Enter. I forgot that arrow to move it around. That's pretty good. There's my image, about the size of my glass. Probably better it overlaps the glass, especially if the green the only go to the two faces. Then once I have my image in there, my, my image does need to be pretty distinctly a lot of contrast between black and white. So not all in, it, images are going to work. I'm going to go up here to bitmap, Con bitmap, convert to bitmap. I got to make sure this is color mode. Grayscale, 300 dpi is good. Okay, that turns it into a black and white photo. Next, I got to remember the darker, the more it's going to laser engrave. So I want to transform this into the inverse. So I go effects, transform, inverse colors, and that reverses all my blacks to whites and all my whites to blacks. That's what I want. So the darker, the more engrave. And then I go up to effects, and I want to go to adjust brightness, contrast, intensity. And the greater the contrast, uh, probably the better the cutout. So I'm going to set that over to 70 or so. Then I'm going to save this on a flash drive, and I'm going to test it on a piece of scrap glass. Make sure it's the sort of engrave I want, and if it is, then I'll run it on the actual glass. The sheet of the glass is pretty thin, and it, it's just regular clear glass with silver paint on the back. The key safety features on here is absolutely positively have your glasses on. When this breaks and it shatters, there are little splinters just like wood, but they, the splinters cut really <coughs> deep, so you cannot get them in your eye. You really do a lot of damage. The other thing, too, is the edges are really sharp. So you want to make sure you handle this glass carefully. Uh, a nice thing to do is use this tape and wrap your edges with the tape like this for two reasons. One is so you don't cut your fingers on the edges, and two is when you put it down, it won't get all scratched. So I'm going to mark it with a Sharpie. So here's six and six. The style of my frame is going to give me a little bit of room to play around. What I'm doing here is I'm actually, all I'm doing is etching it. So this is the glass cutter right here. 
And you can see it's pretty wide, but there's a diamond cutting wheel in the center. So I got to offset it, you know, about eighth inch. So I'm going to use my square. I'm going to offset my square to my mark, the width of that, about an eighth of an inch. I'm not pushing hard, but I am pushing consistently, and this thing's pretty vertical. So I'm listening for it all the way across. And you can see with that offset, I'm right on the blue marks. And then this should just break right on that line. It's pretty cool. Uh, and I don't want to stack any glass because it'll get scratched up. I'm going to do that one more time to get my six inch square. And these are glass breaking pliers specifically designed for this. You can see here they're convex and concave. See how they bend up? So that convex goes right on the seam there, and you just gently squeeze it, and the glass will break. It's by six glass with a little bit of tape on it to keep it protected. Just 0 0.08 thick. I'm going to get in the laser cutter in the top left hand corner. Right there. Again, silver paint side up. I'm going to actually try and do this image not inverted. So there's my image I saved. I go file, print, PLS 3.6. That sends it over to the laser cutter. You open it up, turns it on. This is my relocate view. I'll click on that middle square. I'm gonna, the glass is six by six. So I'll go over three by three. That centers it. I go to settings. Under settings, it's going to be glass, standard glass, and then again, I checked it with the caliper as 0.08. Apply, OK, and then this is my double check for height. I'll click it on there, check with that little thing, and I'll also look at the Z value. I can see the Z value right there is 0.08. Okay, so I'm going to turn the back on and hit laser engrave, and there it goes. rustic cherry Daniel um, I want it you know my, my inside dimensions are six by six for that glass but I'm going to cut miters so I really want to go more like nine inches per side times four so I want at least 36 inches if everybody does the same dimensions people's off cuts other people could use right so I have my board surfaced on all six sides um, this side's ripped parallel to this side and then I'm going to rip it at one and a quarter with my push stick. But I rip one and a quarter. After I'm all done ripping, before I cut any miters on here, I'm going to use the dado blade stack right here. And this time I have the fence set at one and a half. And my blade height is going to be the depth of my rabbit here. I'm going to use these magnetic feather boards to keep it up against the fence. Okay, so I'm going to grab at this whole edge, holding it down. Dado on the inside. I want to keep my hands in the big obtuse angle, or I want to keep my hands far from the blade. So I'm going to reverse this 180, and I'm just making my first cut. And what that does is that gives me my first miter. I'm going to set it 45. And again, it's really important that my dado is on the inside of that miter. And then right down the line. Here's the key on this measurement. It's a little tricky. Here's my glass, 6x6. Six six. It's laser cut, right? When I, I hold it into this rabbit and I line it up on that edge, and that's where I make my mark. I got a little bit of play because it can move around in, in, inside that rabbit. So that's where I make my mark. Every good on the measurement. It's not on the outside. It's not on the inside. It's on the back half of that rabbit. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut that other. Right, my ear far from the blade. My blade's on this side of my mark. It's at 45. Good firm hold on there. After I cut that first piece, I'm going to go back to my glass and double check that it's going to fit in there. It's got a little bit of playroom, but now after I made that cut, I got to cut another triangle and throw it away. So I'm going to just reverse my board this way. Make 
die cut. And then I'm going to cut four identical pieces to this. So I'm going to use this as my template. These things are not perfect, be identical. Your frame won't be very square. Okay? So these are pretty good. You could use this guillotine right here, but you know that thing will cut your finger off just as quick as it'll cut a board, even faster. So fingers never go in the path of that blade. So it's only designed for taking just a pencil shaving off. So these are pretty good. My real bond is going to be wood glue. So I'm going to get a good glue bo bond right here. And actually, before I even glue and nail this together, if I need to do any sanding on the inside of the frame, I want to do that before I put it together because I won't be able to get a sander in there afterwards. And then I'm going to use this framing clamp. Um, Miter clamp. I go back and forth. That, that actually looks like a pretty good joint right there. Um, nail gun, again, parallel is always on. I never fire towards anybody, always away. Nice thing about the clamp is it's kind of out of the way. I'm only putting one nail in there. The bond is the glue. Uh, that nail is just there to hold it. And then I could just kind of work my way around and put my frame together. There, I'm all glued up. I do have a couple teeny little gaps in my nail holes. This is rustic cherry. I'm going to use cherry wood fill. It's alcohol based. It'll dry out like that. So you just take the top off, take just a little bit in your finger, on the tip of your finger, and put the top right back on. <coughs> then with that wood fill, you could fill in, you know, the slight gaps. and the nail holes. If, you're, if for some reason the, the pneumatic nailer didn't reset your nails, then you need to use a nail set and a hammer and knock them down a little bit. Use a hold down stick. First thing I do is I check that height of that blade and it's pretty low. Detail. I'm gonna go back and wood fill that, clean it up sand the whole thing. It's just going to fit right in the back of that frame. And you can see I have a fair bit of room to move it around still. And then here's a framing stapler. I want to really go horizontal to hold my glass in. If I go steep like this, it's going to either catch that glass and chip it or uh, not go in. There it is.